what are those two universal manifestations one is esophageal varices so variceal formation and second is splenomegaly so what is the normal portal pressure normal portal pressure is 5 to 10 mm hg or 10 to 15 cm saline so first what is the normal portal pressure normal portal pressure is 5 to 10 mm hg and the second question which is asked in the form of saline and that is 10 to 15 centimeter saline right so if the normal portal pressure is 5 to 10 mm hg what is the definition of portal hypertension so portal pressure more than 10 so definition of portal hypertension so in portal hypertension the pressure is more than 10 mm hg okay there are two universal manifestations of portal hypertension what are those two universal manifestations one is esophageal varices so variceal formation and second is splenomegaly so what are the universal manifestations means seen in all patients universal manifestations of portal hypertension first is variceal formation or varices and second is splenomegaly splenomegaly clear so simple question at what pressure esophageal variceal formation begins so in patient of portal hypertension there will be esophageal varices so at what pressure it begins it begins at pressure more than 10 mmHg so esophageal variceal formation begins when the pressure is more than 10 and variceal bleeding occurs when the pressure is more than 12 mmHg so varices so variceal formation begins when the pressure is more than 10 mmHg and variceal bleeding is seen variceal bleeding is seen when the pressure is more than 12 mmHg so read the question carefully because both of these questions are asked frequently if you see the causes of portal hypertension what is the most common cause of portal hypertension worldwide that is cirrhosis and if you are talking about children because the most common cause of cirrhosis is generally alcohol and children are not allowed to buy alcohol so in children what is the most common cause it is HP, EHPVO extra hepatic portal venous obstruction so if you see the causes causes of portal hypertension worldwide most common cause cirrhosis so overall most common cause is cirrhosis and in children what is the most common cause in children it is EHPVO this question was asked in AIMS clear now what is the cause of hypertension means increased pressure so see there are two causes either there is increased flow in the vessel or there is increased resistance okay so if you are talking about cirrhosis see in portal hypertension there is increased resistance so it can be because of increased resistance or it can be because of increased flow in the vessel now see the example it's very easy to understand if you see this is liver this is portal vein now these are intrahepatic branches of portal vein clear intrahepatic branches patient is having cirrhosis and you know that in cirrhosis there is formation of regenerative nodules so see there is formation of regenerative nodules okay and these regenerative nodules are going to compress the intrahepatic branches and because of this compression what will happen there is increased resistance in the vessel leading to what portal hypertension lots of questions are asked related to etiology of portal hypertension but before that you should understand that what is the normal anatomy so what is the etiology it can be pre-sinusoidal sinusoidal post-sinusoidal intrahepatic extrahepatic so to understand this just have a look of this simple anatomy 
now see this diagram this is central vein okay and this is portal triad can you see this is central vein and this is portal triad right in this portal triad you can see that this is portal vein this is bile duct and this is a branch of hepatic artery right now see the blood from portal vein is going into sinusoid and the blood from hepatic artery is also going into sinusoid and what happens in the sinusoid there is actual mixing of blood here actual mixing of blood is going to occur and finally it is going to drain into central vein here you can see that this is the bile canaliculi so the bile is going to drain into the bile duct this is the simple anatomy now just focus on this that this is sinusoid okay so any etiology of portal hypertension before sinusoid is pre-sinusoidal after sinusoid is post sinusoidal and if it is in the liver it is intrahepatic and if it is outside liver it is extra hepatic okay see the diagram so this is liver this is the portal vein this is the spleen okay and here we discussed that this is the portal vein one of the branch this is the central vein from portal vein blood goes into central vein clear there was bile duct there was a branch of hepatic artery and mixing of blood was occurring mixing of blood was occurring in this area and that is known as sinusoid so in sinusoid actual mixing of blood is going to occur clear now whatever the causes before this sinusoid is pre-sinusoidal after this sinusoidal sinusoid is post sinusoidal and around or within the sinusoid is sinusoidal right now imagine there is a condition known as splenic av fistula splenic av fistula means splenic arteriovenous fistula so arterial blood is going into the vein and because of this there is increased flow so this is leading to portal hypertension so this is pre-sinusoidal or post-sinusoidal. So you can make out that this is pre-sinusoidal. And this is intrahepatic or extrahepatic? Extrahepatic. Similarly, splenic vein thrombosis or splenomegaly. All these are pre-sinusoidal and extrahepatic causes. Clear? So see, all these are pre-sinusoidal and extrahepatic causes. Clear? So this includes first splenic AV fistula, splenic AV fistula, second splenic vein thrombosis, if there is splenic vein thrombosis and splenomegaly. Clear? Now see the another cause. If there is deposition of X of cystosoma here, here there is deposition of X of cystosoma. So in cases of cystosomiasis also there is portal hypertension. And if this is the location of deposition of X, what is the cause? This is pre-sinusoidal and intrahepatic. And you must be knowing that cystosomiasis is the most common cause of pre-sinusoidal intrahepatic portal hypertension. Okay, so this is. pre sinusoidal intrahepatic right what are the causes most common causes cystosomiasis cystosomiasis this was asked many times so this is most common similar to cystosomiasis in sarcoidosis also similar problem occurs right so second is sarcoidosis, nodular regenerative hyperplasia and graft versus host disease. Nodular regenerative hyperplasia and graft versus host disease. Clear? Now coming to the sinusoid. Right? So around the sinusoid, if some etiology is there, that is sinusoidal. And that includes causes of cirrhosis. So what is the most common cause? Alcohol. Other causes? Hepatitis B virus, Hepatitis C virus infection, primary biliary cirrhosis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, right? So see, what are the sinusoidal causes? In the sinusoidal causes, 
the causes of cirrhosis are included clear so what are those causes alcohol hepatitis b virus infection hepatitis c virus primary biliary cirrhosis primary sclerosing cholangitis right now post sinusoidal intrahepatic cause and that is single cause and that includes vod veno occlusive disease right so what is post sinusoidal post sinusoidal okay intrahepatic and that is single cause that includes veno occlusive disease right and if you are talking about post sinusoidal extrahepatic so that includes what Bartchiari syndrome right sided heart failure ivc obstruction and constrictive pericarditis so post sinusoidal extrahepatic cause post sinusoidal extrahepatic cause this includes Bartchiari syndrome ivc obstruction right sided heart failure and constrictive pericarditis constrictive pericarditis clear so if you remember this image you can easily crack any mcq related to etiology Thank you.